Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome to the next video. I'm going to call this one Expression Magic. So today I'm going to show you some of the power of uh, expressions in Highbyte and what you can do inside of instances. <laughs> so again, I'm running inside a Docker image. I've got Highbyte installed, totally fresh. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to a data source. In this case, I'm going to use OPC UA. So I'm going to create uh, an OPC server connection. Uh, Host.docker.internal. Port 49320, anonymous login, and we're going to do the browse. Hopefully, yep, that works. Return some data, and I'm going to jump in and grab some um, some tags. So let me do, I want specifically some array tags. And I think I've got some. Let's grab a D word array. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to grab a bunch of um, primitives. All right, it's import selected, and now those are in high byte. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test all this with webhook. So I'm going to create a REST output to, to output this data uh, so we can see the transform models, what they look like. So I'm going to create a REST connection. And I've done this before. Uh, webhook has a, a URL here, so I'm going to paste that as the output URL. The endpoint piece, I'm going to uh, take that off and create an output that I'm just going to call out. And I'll remove the transform for this demo. And boom. And the last thing I'll do is I'll just, uh, I won't create the flow yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, <clears throat> a simple model. And the first thing I'm going to do is, I'll just call this expression, expression magic. And I'm going to create um, <clears throat> some different types here. So I'm going to create an array type. We'll call it array from, uh, well, no, we'll just call it array. Uh, I'm going to create another one that is of type, um, I'll call it array part. Let's call it slice. And the last thing I'll do is I'll create another one that is uh, co complex. And you'll see what these mean. So these are just, you know, these could be anything, but I'm going to, basically I'm going to create an array, I'm going to slice an array, and I'm going to create a complex object from primitives in these fields, just as part of this demo. And I'll create an instance, just give it the instance name. And this is where the expression magic is going to happen. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take a bunch of primitives and I want to create an array from them. So these could be OPC tags and I want the output to be an array of those values. So let me copy over an expression that does that and we'll just walk through it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm defining a variable. This is all JavaScript, by the way, right? Um, I'm going to define a variable that is my array, and then I'm going to use this Java2 function to take that JavaScript array and turn it back to Java, defining the type that it is in. So the syntax is a little funny. We use Grail VM uh, behind the scenes, which you can Google and look at some more things you can do there on Stack Overflow, etc. But in this example, what I need to do is pull in um, my array. So if you remember, I pulled in a... Um, D word array, and I don't actually know the size of it, but let's just assume it's got, it's from Kepware or OPC server, so let's just assume it's got a few in there. So the, and we'll mix them up. So the, we're gonna move the second element to the first element, uh, and then we'll put, this gets a little funky. Oops. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap the array, right? Or wait. Uh, Let's scratch that. I need more coffee. Uh, what we're going to do instead of that, let's just pull in the primitives and turn the primitives into an array. That was the goal. So there we go. So long one, comma, long two. And we realize, you know, we eventually need a little bit better of a uh, UI to do this. So we'll be adding um, improvements, but there you go. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an array based on these three primitive tags, and I'm turning it into an array and passing it back. So let's submit that. And now what we'll do is we'll go wire up a flow. Um, we'll just call it a test flow. This is really simple. We're just going to grab the instance, expression magic instance, 
and then we're going to grab our output, which is our rest output, over. And every second, we'll do the read and send it off. We'll turn that on and cross our fingers. And if we did our job right, boom, there's an array of primitives. You know, the OPC server is returning all the same value, but you can see it's, it's incrementing. Right? And that is an example of um, taking primitives and turning them into an array. So let's jump back into the instance. What else can we do? Well, let's slice an array. So we know we have an array type um, that we imported, right? So this one's a little trickier, and I've got to go redefine the actual variable. So I think, let's go look in the OPC server. We have this dword array that we brought in. And this is a little tricky, right? But what we're saying is coming from Java is this array thing. You know, that's our input. So we're going to convert that Java array to a JavaScript array. Right, we'll do a slice, now we're in JavaScript, we'll do a slice operation and grab, I think that's elements zero to two, I think that'll return three elements, maybe two, uh, in the array. So we're gonna grab a piece of the array, and then we're gonna call Java two to turn it back to Java in the form of an int array. We could turn this into a float array or whatever variable we want. But in this example, um, and actually just to drive this home, what I'm gonna do is down here, I'm gonna put the full array, and then up here will be the sliced. And again, Turn this on, cross our fingers, Let's see if we did it right, there we go. So it's two elements. So here's the sliced array, the first two elements, and here's the full array, it's an, it's an array of four. Right, so uh, this is an example of slicing the array. So last but not least, I wanna do something even cooler, which is the ability to create you know, co a complex object out of primitives. So kind of like the array case, but a little more sophisticated. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm going to copy some JavaScript code down here. And what this is doing is creating a variable that is a, a, it's a JSON object, right? Employees, name is Steve, value is, uh, I think this will actually work, data type, example 60. Yeah, so I'm going to grab the first element of this D word array and fill it in with value. And then I'm just going to return value. So what I've done is I've built a JSON object. I've implanted data from uh, an array coming from an OPC server, and I'm gonna return the complex value. And if I go enable, oh, it had to break, right? I couldn't, there's no way. Uh, so I'm gonna grab high byte, and it's failing to read the input. Uh, unable to set up the instance, read on flow. Instance expression contains an attribute complex with an expression contains an invalid input. So it doesn't like what I've done here in that last one. So let's go look. Um, let's, I don't think I brought in a good uh, value. So let's just, let's just bring in a long the, the names were different. Need more coffee. Uh, so save that and then turn the flow. Flow's already running, so once it's fixed, it'll start running. And there you go. Now I've created a complex object and I filled it in with primitives. And I could bring in the array value, I could bring in other complex objects, but this is an example of I built an array, I sliced an array, and I built a complex object all using the expression engine available in Highbyte. So pretty cool what you can do uh, with the data once it's once it's in there. So hopefully that was helpful and gets you thinking. Again, we use Grail VM behind the scenes. So if you Google, you know, Grail VM expression engine, you can view and learn more about the Java to and from and the different functions that you can run in there.